This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The British Parliament The Riot Act, 1714-1715 an act for preventing tumults and riotous assemblies, and for the more speedy and effectual punishing the rioters. Whereas of late many rebellious riots and tumults have been in diverse parts of this kingdom, to the disturbance of the public peace, and the endangering of His Majesty's person and government, and the same are yet continued and fomented by persons disaffected to his majesty, presuming to do so, for that the punishments provided by the laws now in being are not adequate to such heinous offences, and by such rioters his majesty and his administration have been most maliciously and falsely traduced, with an intent to raise divisions, and to alienate the affections of the people from his majesty. Therefore, for the preventing and suppressing of such riots and tumults, and for the more speedy and effectual punishing the offenders therein, be it enacted by the king's most excellent majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the lords spiritual and temporal, and of the commons, in this present Parliament assembled, and by the authority of the same, that, if any persons to the number of twelve or more, being unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled together, to the disturbance of the public peace, at any time after the last day of July, in the year of our Lord 1715, and being required or commanded by any one or more justice or justices of the peace, or by the sheriff of the county, or his under-sheriff, or by the mayor, bailiff or bailiffs, or other head officer, or justice of the peace of any city or town corporate where such assembly shall be, by proclamation to be made in the king's name, in the form hereinafter directed, to disperse themselves, and peaceably to depart to their habitations, or to their lawful business, shall, to the number of twelve or more, notwithstanding such proclamation made, unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously remain, or continue together, by the space of one hour, after such command or request made by proclamation, that then such continuing together to the number of twelve or more, after such command or request made by proclamation, shall be adjudged felony without benefit of clergy, and the offenders therein shall be adjudged felons, and shall suffer death as in a case of felony without benefit of clergy." and be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that the order and form of the proclamation that shall be made by the authority of this act shall be as hereafter followeth, that is to say, the justice of the peace, or other person authorised by this act to make the said proclamation, shall, among the said rioters, or as near to them as he can safely come, with a loud voice command, or cause to be commanded, silence to be, while proclamation is making, and after that shall openly and with loud voice make or cause to be made proclamation in these words, or like in effect. Our Sovereign Lord the King chargeth and commandeth all persons being assembled immediately to disperse themselves, and peaceably to depart to their habitations, or to their lawful business, upon the pains contained in the act, 
made in the first year of King George, for preventing tumults and riotous assemblies. God save the King. And every such justice and justices of the peace, sheriff, under-sheriff, mayor, bailiff, and other head officer aforesaid, within the limits of their respective jurisdictions, are hereby authorized, empowered, and required, on notice or knowledge of any such unlawful, riotous, and tumultuous assembly, to resort to the place where such unlawful, riotous, and tumultuous assemblies shall be, of persons to the number of twelve or more, and there to make or cause to be made proclamation in manner aforesaid. And be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that if such persons so unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled, or twelve or more of them, after proclamation made in manner aforesaid, shall continue together and not disperse themselves within one hour, that then it shall and may be lawful to and for every justice of the peace, sheriff or under-sheriff of the county where such assembly shall be, and also to and for every high or petty constable, and other peace officer within such county, and also to and for every mayor, justice of the peace, sheriff, bailiff, and other head officer, high or petty constable, and other peace officer of any city or town corporate, where such assembly shall be, and two or four such other person and persons as shall be commanded to be assisting unto any such justice of the peace, sheriff or under-sheriff, mayor, bailiff, or other head officer aforesaid, who are hereby authorized and empowered to command all his majesty's subjects of age and ability to be assisting to them therein, to seize and apprehend, and they are hereby required to seize and apprehend such persons, so unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously continuing together after proclamation made, as aforesaid, and forthwith to carry the persons so apprehended before one or more of His Majesty's Justices of the Peace of the county or place where such persons shall be apprehended, in order to their being proceeded against for such their offences according to law. And that, if the persons so unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled, or any of them, shall happen to be killed, maimed, or hurt, in the dispersing, seizing, or apprehending, or endeavouring to disperse, seize, or apprehend them, that then every such justice of the peace, sheriff, under-sheriff, mayor, bailiff, head officer, high or petty constable, or other peace officer, and all and singular persons being aiding and assisting to them, or any of them, shall be free, discharged, and indemnified, as well against the king's majesty, his heirs and successors, as against all and every other person and persons, of, for, or concerning the killing, maiming, or hurting of any such person or persons, so unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled, that shall happen to be so killed, maimed, or hurt, as aforesaid. And be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that if any persons, unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled together, to the disturbance of the public peace, shall unlawfully, and with force, demolish or pull down, or begin to demolish or pull down, any church or chapel, or any building for religious worship certified and registered according to the statute made in the first year of the reign of the late King William and Queen Mary, entitled An Act for Exempting Their Majesty's Protestant Subjects Dissenting from the Church of England from the Penalties of Certain Laws, or any dwelling-house, barn, stable, or other outhouse, that then every such demolishing, 
or pulling down, or beginning to demolish or pull down, shall be adjudged felony without benefit of clergy, and the offenders therein shall be adjudged felons, and shall suffer death as in case of felony, without benefit of clergy. Provided always, and be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that if any person or persons do or shall with force and arms willfully and knowingly oppose, obstruct, or in any manner willfully and knowingly let, hinder, or hurt any person or persons that shall begin to proclaim, or go to proclaim according to the proclamation hereby directed to be made, whereby such proclamation shall not be made, that then every such opposing, obstructing, letting, hindering, or hurting such person or persons, so beginning or going to make such proclamation as aforesaid, shall be adjudged felony without benefit of clergy, and the offenders therein shall be adjudged felons, and shall suffer death as in case of felony, without benefit of clergy, and that also every such person or persons, so being unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled, to the number of twelve, as aforesaid, or more, to whom proclamation should or ought to have been made, if the same had not been hindered, as aforesaid, shall likewise, in case they or any of them, to the number of twelve or more, shall continue together and not disperse themselves within one hour after such let or hindrance so made, having knowledge of such let or hindrance so made, shall be adjudged felons, and shall suffer death as in case of felony, without benefit of clergy. And be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that if after the said last day of July, 1715, any such church or chapel, or any such building for religious worship, or any such dwelling-house, barn, stable, or other outhouse, shall be demolished or pulled down, wholly or in part, by any persons so unlawfully, riotously, and tumultuously assembled, that then, in case such church, chapel, building for religious worship, dwelling-house, barn, stable, or outhouse, shall be out of any city or town, that is either a county of itself, or is not within any hundred, that then the inhabitants of the hundred in which such damage shall be done, shall be liable to yield damages to the person or persons injured and damnified by such demolishing or pulling down, wholly or in part. And such damages shall and may be recovered by action to be brought in any of His Majesty's courts of record at Westminster, wherein no effoin, protection, or wager of law, or any imparlance shall be allowed, by the person or persons damnified thereby, against any two or more of the inhabitants of such hundred, such action for damages to any church or chapel to be brought in the name of the rector, vicar, or curate of such church or chapel that shall be so damnified, in trust for applying the damages to be recovered in rebuilding or repairing such church or chapel. And that judgment being given for the plaintiff or plaintiffs in such action, the damages so to be recovered shall, at the request of such plaintiff or plaintiffs, his or their executors or administrators, be raised and levied on the inhabitants of such hundred, and paid to such plaintiff or plaintiffs, in such manner and form, and by such ways and means, as are provided by the statute made in the seven-and-twentieth year of the reign of Queen Elizabeth, for reimbursing the person or persons on whom any money recovered against any hundred, by any party robbed, shall be levied. And in case any such church, chapel, building for religious worship, dwelling-house, barn, stable, or outhouse so damnified, shall be in any city or town that is either a county of itself, or is not within any hundred, 
that then such damages shall and may be recovered by action to be brought in manner aforesaid, where no effoin, protection, or wager of law, or any imparlance shall be allowed, against two or more inhabitants of such city or town, and judgment being given for the plaintiff or plaintiffs in such action, the damages so to be recovered shall, at the request of such plaintiff or plaintiffs, his or their executors or administrators, made to the justices of the peace of such city or town, at any court of sessions to be holden for the said city or town, be raised and levied on the inhabitants of such city or town, and paid to such plaintiff or plaintiffs, in such manner and form, and by such ways and means, as are provided by the said statute, made in the seven and twentieth year of the reign of Queen Elizabeth, for reimbursing the person or persons on whom any money recovered against any hundred by any party robbed, shall be levied. And be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that this act shall be openly read at every quarter session, and at every leet or law day. Provided always that no person or persons shall be prosecuted by virtue of this act, for any offence or offences committed contrary to the same, unless such prosecution be commenced within twelve months after the offence committed. And be it further enacted by the authority aforesaid, that the sheriffs and their deputies, stewards and their deputies, bailies of regalities and their deputies, magistrates of royal boroughs, and all other inferior judges and magistrates, and also all high and petty constables, or other peace officers of any county, stewartry, city or town, within that part of Great Britain called Scotland, shall have the same powers and authority for putting this present act in execution within Scotland, as the justices of the peace and other magistrates aforesaid, respectively have by virtue of this act within and for the other parts of this kingdom, and that all and every person and persons who shall at any time be convicted of any of the offences aforementioned within that part of Great Britain called Scotland shall for every such offence incur and suffer the pain of death and confiscation of movables, and also that all prosecutions for repairing the damages of any church or chapel, or any building for religious worship, or any dwelling-house, barn, stable, or outhouse, which shall be demolished or pulled down, in whole or in part, within Scotland, by any persons unlawfully, riotously, or tumultuously assembled, shall and may be recovered by some our action, at the instance of the party aggrieved, his or her heirs or executors, against the county, stewartry, city or borough respectively, where such disorders shall happen, the magistrates being summoned in the ordinary form, and the several counties and stewartries called by edictal citation at the market cross of the head borough of such county or stewartry respectively and that, in general, without mentioning their names and designations. Provided, and it is hereby declared, that this act shall extend to all places for religious worship in that part of Great Britain called Scotland, which are tolerated by law, and where His Majesty, King George, the Prince and Princess of Wales, and their issue, are prayed for, in express words. End of the Riot Act